Hi guys, Wayne here for the Let's Play Kit Gaming Channel and welcome to my new State of Decay Let's Play series and in this series we are going to go ahead and start a new game straight away. Now obviously we're going to lose any progress that we've made in the past but that doesn't matter because I'm going to teach you guys every single thing that you need to know about surviving in this game from the prologue to the very end of the game. Now in this Let's Play series you can expect at least 20 minute episodes per episode. So you're going to be watching for 20 minutes I hope every time and I'm going to complete this game not specifically as fast as I possibly can but as in depth as I possibly can. Now what I'm talking about here guys is I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know about the game. So we're going to start with the prologue and in the prologue I'm already going to start teaching you guys about things such as the powerhouse abilities and also some useful tips for the prologue that I found out the first time I played this game. So let's go ahead and get into that straight away. You cannot die in the prologue guys, if Marcus gets downed, or Maya gets downed, you can just press A to get back up with full health without getting injured. The same applies for stamina, you do not get stamina depletions, you do not get tired at all. So what can I offer, using this information in the prologue, well, fight everything. In the prologue it will tell you to be as stealthy as possible. We do not want to do that, we want to be arrogant bastards, we want to charge into hordes of zombies like this, and we want to press the left bumper and Y to do power attacks, and as you can see, we've just gone up a, a fighting level straight away. Now, it's very reasonable and plausible and very easy to go up to at least level 3, maybe even level 4 fighting ability at the very beginning of the game in the prologue. So if we press up on the D-pad and then press the right bumper to scroll across, you can see Marcus Campbell's abilities. Now Marcus Campbell is already level 2 fighting, but you'll see he also has a powerhouse ability. Now this is described as, just don't ask me to help you move furniture, okay? But the killing blow chance is put plus 0%. Basically, the more you kill with the left bumper and white, and the more you fight in general, the more your killing blow chance is going to be increased. If you combine the powerhouse, uh, high level powerhouse with high level fighting, and the high level heavy weapons, then you can literally charge into hordes of zombies and kill everything in one hit. So that's what I'm going to teach you guys in this uh, Let's Play. Maybe not right straight away, but as soon as we get the ability to, the chance to. As for Ed, you'll see that Ed is nimble. Now let's go across to Ed's skills, you'll see Ed is... Oh, that's Marcus. Uh, let's get to Ed. Ed is nimble. Why can't we switch over to Ed's missions? Oh yeah, we can't control him yet. But Ed is nimble, that gives him the reflexes ability. Great reflexes means that his stamina it takes less of a uh, toll, less of a toll. And also he can run for great periods of time without getting tired. So I'll teach you more about that when we get control of a nimble character. But for now, let's break in through the windows, because cowboys always make an entrance. So this is the first group of survivors that we can encounter in the game. Got it, bro. Right. So we just want to take that. We want to take that and we want to deposit Marcus's crappy weapon so we've got some space. We want to take the pills. Now we want to hop out through the window once again and get into the water tower. Now if you press up on the d-pad guys, again let me just go, uh, go ahead and say, as well as a let's play, this is also going to be a walkthrough for new players and veteran players alike. Because I know this game like the back of my hand now because as you guys see from my guides, I've done a hell of a lot to play this game. I know everything there is to know about this game, so I'm going to make sure that you guys to do too. So we've got our first group of survivors, we've got Thomas Ritter, he's a born leader. He's a father figure, he enjoyed coming and liked to travel. We've also got Sheila Brookstone. She has no special skills to speak of. This guy is a good researcher, that means, if he actually survives, that we can have him man the library. So first things first, we want to climb up here to the watchtower. We want to survey the area. This will ping another mission that is the main mission in this game. As you can see here, we've been told our current objective is to man the water tower, but also to investigate these places here. They're the cabins for survivors. But we're not going to really bother with that. So we're just going to scout the area. If you hold the left trigger, guys, you'll be able to um, 
make these question marks turn into actual places that you can explore to forage for items and weapons and even survivor enclaves and things later on such as that even special infected too which are good for zed hunting missions infestations which potentially damage your camp if you don't deal with them again more on that later I'm going to cover absolutely everything that you need to know, but in this episode, guys, we're going to cover mainly the special abilities, such as uh, weapon specializations, and um, just generally get on with some tips that you guys can use to your advantage in the prologue and just after the first part of the prologue. Those gunshots lead us to our next survivor, but we've also got to investigate the ridge cabins, which we are going to do first, just because, once again, guys, we want Marx's powerhouse ability to be as high level as possible. Which means we need to fight. Also, another useful trick. You want to uh, fill your inventory with weapons and items straight away in the prologue. Do not go to the main game without a full inventory. It's very easy to get a full inventory. And once you get to the church, which is the main survivor area of the game, the main game when the main game really starts, you gain a lot of influence straight away. Now, influence is basically your form of currency. The more influence you have, the more better items you can take from your camp and so on and so forth so we're going to investigate these cabins for survivors we're also going to raid the, the things here again that was a loud noise which will attract zombies we do not have to worry about that right now guys we want to be loud basically if you hold the left bumper while searching you will potentially make loud noises but you will search faster make loud noises in the prologue guys because you fight more zombies you can't die take advantage of this little exploit sort of thing straight away in the prologue you cannot die Therefore, make noise, fight as many zombies as possible. If we manage to get Marcus down in this episode, then I will show you. We've just gained a level, a powerhouse level, which is excellent. That's exactly what we want to do, guys. Marcus, straight away, is pretty much one of the most perfect survivors that you can get. So take advantage of his powerhouse ability. Because combined with heavy weapons, combined with high level fighting, Marcus is pretty much unstoppable. The same can also be said for Jacob Ritter, a survivor we get the ability to control a little later on. And also a few other randomly generated survivors too. Basically guys, the powerhouse ability is one of the best abilities you can get. Again, I'm taking some damage here guys, but that's not something we want to worry about because as I said, we can't die. Leadership skills you gain um, while you are while you have someone else in your party. For example, we've got Ed following us now. That means Marcus is the leader because we're controlling him. I'm going to get Marcus down, guys, just to show you what happens. So, Marcus should be down now. Yeah, so if we press A repeatedly, we will get up without injury and get full life again. You can also mash the left bumper and Y button straight away to gain some quick levels and quick finishes. Execution finishes, guys, are the perfect way to gain powerhouse levels and fighting levels really quick because you get uh, a lot more XP. So if Marks now has a damaged weapon, we're going to go in and equip that. If you put damaged weapons back in your supply locker, they the next day, both in-game and regular day now, I believe, uh, real-life day, uh, the weapon will be back to full health. The same applies to vehicles. I, I believe this also applies to game days now. It used to apply to just uh, real-life days, but we'll see. So we're going to keep searching the cabins for survivors just because we want to get as many levels as possible. Again, guys, I cannot stress how important this is. If you want a good head start in the game, you want Marcus to be unstoppable, you want to progress in the game without issues, then by all means, guys, make sure that you fight in the prologue at the time when you cannot die. We're already at level 3 powerhouse, we're already at level 3 fighting, so level 4 fighting, so we're doing damn freaking good, guys. So we have more cabins here, we also have some campsites, but we've just been told to go over here to distant gunshots. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to get Maya and then we're going to investigate the camp for survivors before we head, not for survivors, sorry, for items. We're going to fill both inventories with items for influence when we start the game. And then we're going to go to the main survivor area, which is the church. We've also got an abandoned RV here, which is pretty cool. It just reminds me of The Walking Dead. First things first, on the way to Maya, we have these campsites here. Now, there's a few things that you guys should know about these campsites. One of them, I believe it's that one over there, always has a fuel supply locker, which is a great place to get a petrol bomb. Now, I'll tell you more about the petrol bomb in a second. Snacks, you can never go without snacks, guys. Whenever you go out on your adventures, make sure you take snacks. No matter what... Oh, crap, you scared the crap out of me, you son of a bitch. 
the backpacks here usually have backpacks in here as well. Where I mean he's... We don't have to worry about flares just yet, guys. I'm going to leave the flares. Flares are great distractions, and I would recommend them at certain points, but not in the prologue. You can get flares pretty much anywhere. This is the campsite that always has a petrol bomb, I believe. Let's deal with these Zeds first. Come here, you dead bastard. LB and Y. The finishing moves are brutal, guys, especially with them. Um, actually, I believe we can level up Marcus's weapon specialization now. Yes, we can. Right, so that's exactly what we're going to do. As soon as you hit level 3 or level 4, I believe, guys, you get the ability to set Marcus's weapon specialization, so that's what we're going to do. Go up, press up on your D-pad, press the right bumper to go to skills, and you'll see weapon specialization. Blunt weapons increases your knockdown chance when using blunt weapons. Master the use of blunt weapons. Chance to decapitate while using edge weapons, such as machetes and little axes. Blunt weapons are things like the barricades and the pipes and such. The one we want for power, because Marcus is a powerhouse, is heavy weapons. Mighty blow chance, plus 14%. That combined with the instant kill with the powerhouse is freaking unstoppable, guys. So Marcus, always heavy weapons. Hold X to choose, and now Marcus is a heavy weapon specialization. For this, you always want, well I always want, you can do a kick that staggers the target and knocks them back. You can also have a shove. I recommend the shove when combined with powerhouse and heavy weapons because you can shove them down to the ground and instantly press the left bumper and Y to finish them off. Two hits and that's all it takes, guys. So I'm going to choose the shove ability. You also gain a defensive ability shortly as well with a few more levels. So we're going to hold the left bumper to search because we want as many uh, zombies as possible. We want noise! So we got a large backpack, that's what I was talking about earlier guys. If you search these backpacks in campsites, you gain, uh, you potentially stand the chance of gaining larger backpacks. This always has a petrol bomb. Again, when I said more about petrol bombs, where if you're looking for the blaze of glory, aka the you always were an a-hole gorman achievement, when you're downed and the screen is red, if you have a molotov or a grenade equipped, you can press the right bumper to go out in a blaze of glory. Now the Blaze of Glory achievement, basically, a throwback to the Alien franchise, will give you that achievement, but it will take out a horde of zombies too. This achievement only applies when you do it. Two large backpacks in one go, that's pretty awesome. This achievement only applies when you do it, the, the survivor you are controlling. But if you have a survivor out with you, and they get damaged to the point where they die, they will sacrifice themselves, they will go out in a Blaze of Glory, and kill any hordes of zombies giving you the ability to make a swift escape so we have a gun but we want to get fighting levels so we're just gonna go ahead and smack the living shit out of all of these zombies with melee so we're already a level 4 powerhouse basically guys Marcus is halfway to being um, a maxed out fighting survivor which is pretty damn awesome so we're just going to get the left bumper and white attacks in as, as much as possible. We're also going to just swing like there's no freaking tomorrow. Bonus XP for slaughter. So we've just rescued Maya. Maya is also a controllable survivor, guys. Also, if you want a prime example of how great this game's scenery is, check this out. I know, right? I hope not. We got some survivors back at the ranger station that seem to know what's going on. But we didn't have time for it to taste. Well, so we can now switch to Maya, but we're not going to do that just yet until we get to a few campsites. And the reason for this is, once again, going to Marcus's skills, the cardio ability uh, levels up when you run. So we want to sprint as much as possible with Marcus because Marcus is going to be our main survivor. So Maya was in the army. I'll teach you about Maya's skills in just a, a moment, guys. Again, if we wanted to, we could uh, use the snacks to raise Marcus's uh, stamina back up quickly and pretty much instantly, actually. But I'm not going to do that because I want to save the snacks for the start of the game when we actually get to start the game properly. Apparently I missed something in this campsite. 
As you can see, guys, if the campsite is X'd out, that means the area is fully searched. I must have missed something here. So let's see what this is. A snack. You never want to leave a snack behind. So first things first, we want to run back to the ranger station to trigger the next mission. Once we've done that, then we will search the rest of the area. We've got a Z following us. Let's show you what guns are like. That's what guns are like. Enough said. Pretty awesome gun though, I, I do enjoy the squirrel rifles. I enjoy the rifles in general, but I'm more of a shotgun bro. Cowboys always make an entrance. So as you can see, our new group of survivors didn't exactly last very long. <coughs> Not very likely, Ed. Right. Now this little event that's about to happen, guys. <laughs> so, Ed is getting savaged, and now we get the mission ping now to save Ed. What happens if you don't save Ed, guys? Well, if you've ever wanted to know, let's take a look for ourselves. Maya will save Ed. He is now, bro. How the hell does that happen? I don't know, man. It doesn't make sense. We can't stay here. Come on. Let's grab what we can and get moving. Great idea. So, how to use the supply lockers to your advantage in the prologue. Version 2. We want to get rid of uh, Marx's crappy weapons once again. We also want to deposit our large backpack. We want to switch out to Maya really quickly. And then we want to go back into the supply locker. We want to equip this large backpack. And we'll have Maya take out the rest of the ammo too. Now, Maya has two s slots left. Marcus has three. So we want to fill these up. Thomas Ritter is still on the menu because he is a crucial storyline survivor in just a moment, guys. I will teach you about that in a second. First things first. We want to finish searching this area for useful supplies. There's another cabin over here, I believe. Yes. Now this cabin is usually, occasionally, I should say, not usually, quite important because it hosts a bug, which is very useful in the prologue. If you want to exploit it, go ahead. If it's still here, it might have been updated since the last uh, the last uh, title update, but we shall see shortly, guys. Basically, this cabin that I'm taking you guys to now usually hosts literally hundreds of zombies just here for no reason. Right, so I'm going to switch out to Maya for a second because I'll teach you about Maya's uh, skills. Maya is listed as a soldier, which means she starts out with improved, uh, I believe it's wits, fighting and shooting. Let me just double check this. Improved shooting and fighting, she's no-nonsense, which means improved wits. She's eagle-eyed, which means she improves shooting faster. Basically, she's pretty damn good, guys. So there's a cabin down here. However, I don't believe it's one of these cabins, but we're going to level up a few... Get a few more levels, anyway, while we're here. Once again, guys, this is what you want to do. It's what you need to do in the prologue. Gain as many levels as possible. Also, once you've completed the Memento mission, you can actually move back to this area. The cabins, which I thoroughly recommend. You can move back to the ranger station, I should say. And, uh, did I say I thoroughly recommend it? I recommend it for the fact that it's the great scenery. I'm lost in my own little world here. I recommend it for the scenery, but as far as actual usefulness, it's good for a challenge run, as in, you'll cut off from the rest of the world you're cut off from the rest of the world and basically pretty much guys there's hardly anything here for you to survive on so it's great if you want a flawless challenge but as far as actually surviving it's damn difficult so it's great for a challenge run where you want extreme difficulty I wouldn't bother with those bullets let's see where else we got in here 
No bullets. Right. The reason I'm doing this, guys, is once again, I have a tendency to like to move back to the cabins later on. Um, once the memento mission's finished. I don't know if you, if that's actually possible again now. A lot, a lot of things have changed since the last title update. Maybe it was a glitch, maybe not, I don't know. But we shall find out later. So let's go and see what this last cabin has in store for us, if anything. Then we will get on with the rest of the prologue. Come on, Marcus. I'm going to use a snack. I've got plenty of snacks. A lot more than I usually get from the prologue, so... I'm going to use a snack and try and get some new cardio levels up. Die, you prick. Can we get at least one more level? Nah. Damn it. Right. We're going to work our way back up here to this final cabin. Then the area is fully searched. Now, this should still apply for the, if I do decide to move back here later on, just to show you guys how difficult it can be moving back to the cabins. But level 3 cardio now, which is grand. Oh, I hate it when you play possum. Oh no, my 2 bird foe's broken. Damn it. Right, so we need to try and find another weapon. We've still got level 5 fighting. That's epic, level 5. That means we're 2... Yay! A weapon as well. We're 2 levels away from being maxed out completely in the fighting department. So we've got another snack. The glitch hasn't applied, so perhaps it's been fixed, guys. It's a brilliant glitch, though. It was very useful for maxing out Marcus straight away. Which I think is pretty damn fun. So, oh well, one of those things. Also, earlier on, guys, you saw me set um, Marcus's weapon specialization to heavy weapons. As soon as you find a heavy weapon, you st and you start using a heavy weapon, you start leveling up heavy weapons. Common sense, right? So let's go back into Marcus's skills. We may have unlocked... No, we have not unlocked a defensive skill yet. Right. Let's finish off these Zeds. Then we will go ahead and exit this area and carry on with the rest of the game. So let's switch out to Maya as she has improved cardio and we want to level up her a little bit too. Now let's head here. The ind industrial supply store. That's exactly where we want to be right now. The so Ranger Station has been abandoned. We've got two campsites still left to explore. But it's not really necessary right now, guys. I've done everything that I wanted to show you in the prologue, including leveling up Marcus a little bit. Be even cooler if we can level up Maya a little bit, but it's probably not possible. Plus, I'm not really too bothered. After a certain point in the game, I don't really use Maya anymore. Especially once I start getting survivors. More survivors with a powerhouse ability. More survivors with a nimble ability. And also gain control of Ed. Maya and people like Maya become not so good, I suppose. The shooting ability is pretty damn awesome, though. Right, we can't switch back to Marcus now. I forgot about that. So we want to search here. Get another hatchet. Don't mind if I do. Junk. Pointless. Junk's good for distracting Zeds, but I don't usually bother with it. Another petrol bomb. Should be some meds in here usually as well. Yeah, good. Right, truck keys acquired. What we want to do is get in this truck. And we want to drive, 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 drive. Also, good note, guys. If you want to, the Memento mission to be easy later on, which I never do because I like, to, like it to be difficult, leave the truck. Leave the truck there because you can run over all the zombies in the area. Also, if you drop this down here, it will explode. This is the reason I do this. It's not necessary, but I'm just showing you guys. Because I'm already level 5 fighting. But when this explodes, it attracts a shit ton of zombies. Which is great for getting last minute levels before you leave Mount Tana. Which I, once again, recommend, guys. So that's it. Everything's dead. Except for this bro here. Die! So we're about to leave Mount Tana. Fun trivia fact guys, this ledge here that you can see is the way out. But if you go here before you rescue Maya, when the, uh, Thomas Ritter and the group of survivors are still alive. Thomas Ritter is Liddy's dad basically, if you guys didn't catch on in the storyline. Because I'm talking very loudly. Uh, this ledge will not be active, you will not be able to leave Mount Tana. So yeah, that's a fun little trivia fact. Can I switch out to Marcus yet? Nope, because I'm in the middle of a mission. So we're going to get in this car first. Move! Get in the car, boys. Come on, Ed! 
car door. If you press X, then you can use the car door. This is a throwback to Zombieland, one of my favourite zombie movies. And it's actually part of an achievement in this game too, guys, called uh, The Little Things. Which is also, I believe it's rule number 32 on the Zombieland rules. Enjoy the little things. This warehouse here is where you want to make your first stop. Just because, I'll, I'll show you in a second guys exactly why you want to make this stop. Aye, got attacked. Once again, you can, uh, I haven't told you this, got this actually yet guys. You can die in this half of the prologue, so I'll try not to. If you search in here, there's usually construction supplies when you first start the game. While you cannot pick up the construction supplies yet, the construction supplies usually spawn with heavy weapons such as the axe or chopper. Like, oh no, it's a hatchet, damn it. Axes, hatchets, choppers, usually axe weapons, basically. Let's see if we can get a heavy weapon in here. No, damn it. Anything else? Nope. Anything else to search in here? He's just chilling. Nope. No heavy weapons. Right. So we're stopping another on another another warehouse on the way. Basically, guys, what I was saying is, if you stop at these warehouses along the way, you are able to get heavy weapons at the very beginning of the game, which is great for maxing out Marcus. I've missed a, missed something here, so let me just check this one. Maybe? No, I wouldn't bat. Blunt weapon. Better than a kick in the teeth, but still not what we're looking for. So let's get back in the car and head on our way. Is that construction supplies outside? I believe it is. It is. How the hell do we get in there? Right, let's get in. We're going to get a goddamn axe, guys. Just so we can level up Marcus. This is probably going to be going on longer than 20 minutes like I said earlier. Yep, we're already nearly at the half hour mark. So bear with me guys, this is an elongated prologue. This is going to be an introduction episode, as I said, where I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know to survive in the prologue. So, in the prologue and to build yourself up, leaving the prologue and going into the main game. Son of a bitch, we can't get in there. Right, so we're going to take this little yellow car for now, and we're going to try and find another warehouse along the way to try and get Marcus a heavy weapon. It's not exactly necessary, uh, like, first thing, guys, but it's something I like to do. And that's the first time I've ever not got a heavy weapon from that warehouse, so we'll see how things work out. But it's also good so you can get a feel for the general area. And I've never been to this little cabin before, so let's see what we've got in here. What are you guys doing? They're just standing there. Plus, again, more fighting levels before you get to the church. Always fun, guys. While well, you've still got a party of survivors with you as well. Plus, Maya is a good controllable survivor if you like shooting. She's a damn good survivor if you like shooting. Thanks for her improved shooting. Quite simple. Ed, kill that guy. No, don't barricade, woman. We need to search. That was loud. We've attracted Zeds. 45 cal. Right, so we want to evacuate here quite quickly. While well, he was jumping towards the screen. Who's down? Marcus is down. Right. <laughs> this isn't going well. Get in the car, Marcus. Right, so no heavy weapons th thus far, guys, but there's still time. Marcus, get in the vehicle. We are evacuating this place because we were loud. Crap. We're trying to evacuate this place, but we're stuck on a log. Right. Panic averted. We're back on the road. All this, all this for a heavy weapon, just so Marcus can get a good head start in the game. Damn it, Marcus, it's a good job I love your face. And your little afro. And your powerhouse ability. No, seriously, guys, Marcus is pretty much one of the best survivors you can get early on in the game. Do not kill him off. Do not let him die. Do not neglect him. That powerhouse ability combined with heavy weapons is unstoppable. Any powerhouse survivor is pretty much unstoppable, guys. And I will show you all about them in the game. So we couldn't get a heavy weapon, but I've told you, taught you about construction supplies. We want this. Evacuate. <laughs> you 
Yeah, I love doing that. I love doing that into a horde of zombies. Get in the car, Ed. Get in the car, Ed. That's better. Right, now we're going to speed to the church and end this, hopefully, at the half hour mark. Infestation along the way, damn it. Jump! We shall jump. We shall do a jump in our new sheriff mobile. Park. And here we are, guys, at the church. The first main survivor hub in the game. That'd be Ed. Yeah, take that, you sheriff hat bastard. Does anyone know if you can control Alan? Let me know in the comments if you've ever been able to control Alan, because I've never been able to control him, and I've always wanted to. Right, so the Grand Tour. Let's go ahead and watch the Grand Tour. Also, fun fact, guys, all Lee does is show you around the, the church. So if you run here, this is good if you've played the game multiple times, you will simply spawn and the mission will be over. All she does is show you the bedroom, show you the radio room, and that's it. So we've now skipped the boring part of the introduction mission. Again, fun fact, if you've uh, played the game multiple times, you don't really want to see it all the time. Hi, Marcus. Right guys, that is it for this part of the prologue. Now the prologue's over, the main game is on its way, and we are basically having to find medicine for Ed. So let's see this little event here. Alan complaining to Sam. Ah, uh, they don't know about Thomas. <laughs> right, so this is our first storyline mission, guys, and we will do this in episode two. Right, a lot more education for you guys coming in episode two. In this episode, I've taught you all about weapon specializations, how to make the most of the damn prologue. And look at this, guys. Marcus is a freaking beast already. And that's just from leveling up on the prologue. We tried to find heavy weapons. Hopefully you guys stop off at that warehouse and get better luck than I did in this playthrough. I've always found a heavy weapon there. This is the first time I've never not found a heavy weapon. So I will teach you all about the survivor interface. I will teach you all about new survivors already I've also taught you guys I've had some food <laughs> I've also taught I also will teach you guys all about the uh, the map area leveling up your camp and using the radio and basically everything that you're about to need to know guys in the game coming is coming in the next next episode I'm not going to skimp on the details guys I'm going to give you every piece of information every useful piece of information that you could possibly need in this entire game and I really hope you've enjoyed this first episode I certainly have and I'm pausing the game now just so we don't lose any more time just while I finish off and wrap things up and yeah that's all I can say guys I really hope you've enjoyed it and um, as I said I'm not playing this blindly I'm I have a like a lot of guides on this game on my channel and this is the first proper let's play I've done of the game that hopefully won't glitch or run into bugs or errors. 
but I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know about weapon specializations even further, special abilities such as nimble and powerhouse, the best ways to survive, the best way to take out specially infected such as juggernauts and ferals, the best way to take on hordes of zombies and infestations, the best way to progress storyline missions, the best ways to build up your camp, how to deal and manage with your survivors, your survivor camps, the best home sites, the potential home sites, best ways to challenge yourselves, weapons and all sorts of things guys. Basically, everything that you could possibly need to know about this game, you will see in this Let's Play, which I am also doubling up as a walkthrough, step by step, every step of the way, I will be giving you guys support ongoing and if you need help guys if you need if you have anything to say if you ever even want to chat just drop me a comment below and i always reply to my comments as fast as possible so yeah i really hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and i really hope you enjoy the future episodes too so all the best my friends and until next time wayne here for the let's play Cat gaming channel saying goodbye